Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I have for you 10 rustic spring decor DIYs and I really hope you will enjoy them. DIY number one. For this project I'm going to be using this embroidery hoop, one part of it, and then clothespins. I got these at Dollar General but you know you can find them at um, Dollar Tree as well for a dollar. Uh, next thing I'm going to do just take each clothespin and just clip it uh, around the embroidery hoop. Now um, you can do this this way or you can also flip um, every other one opposite way like so and put it this way. I decided uh, to put all of them on the outside and when I was done with all of them I just added three picks of these beautiful colorful uh, flowers. They were from the Dollar Tree and also I have decided to add a little greenery so I took two uh, leaves, longer leaves that I had on hand and I just hot glued them on the back and that's it for this wreath. I think it's super beautiful, so inexpensive and I, the, the best part is you can customize it any way you want, um, whatever fits your style. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm Yelena. I am stay-at-home mom of two kids that loves crafting and doing DIYs. Everything that I do is on a budget and mostly in a rustic far farmhouse style. So if something like that sounds good to you, please come over, uh, watch my other videos and hopefully you will like them enough to stick around. Say hi, introduce yourself. I like to get to know you. Also, if you're on social media, look for me on uh, Instagram, Pinterest and Facebook. Just come and say hi. DIY number two. For this product, I'm going to be using this wood leg that I got from Lowe's for, I believe, a little bit less than $3. And these saucers, they were 98 cents a piece. First, I'm taking off the screw and then I'm going to uh, paint all of this with my Rust-Oleum chalk paint in a linen white color. All of these projects that I'm showing you today are my old projects that I made a year ago for spring. And since I was new to um, YouTube world and my channel was new, a lot of people didn't see them. So I thought it would be cool just to come and show you guys what I did earlier. So if some of the footages are not really good, uh, forgive me. That was just the beginning and I was learning things along the way. Now, when everything was dry, I am taking a Waverly chalk paint in a color mineral and I am dry brushing it all over the saucers and as well as the uh, wooden leg. I wanted to distress it a little bit and then when I was done with this part now I am taking a Rustoli I mean a Waverly chalk paint in a color truffle to distress it even even further this one is a deeper brown color so I didn't really want to distress it too much just add it here and there because I really want wanted this um, to look rustic and farmhouse. Now I'm taking this all-purpose super glue from Dollar Tree and I am mixing that with my hot glue and I am attaching all these pieces together creating um, a candlestick. So after everything was glued I put the heavy uh, paint can on the top and I made sure to leave it until it was completely dried. While that was drying I um, took this bowl kids ball from the Dollar Tree because I couldn't find the styrofoam ball and I am taking moss and also this um, adhe spray adhesive and I'm spraying it on the ball and just attaching moss all the way around. When um, everything was attached I am taking the scissors and I'm just cutting off the excess because I wanted it really to be smooth. Now I didn't um, worry to cover every single part of this ball and you'll see just in a minute why. I'm taking these beautiful flowers from the Dollar Tree and first I'm going to start with the white ones. I am pulling the flowers off the stem and then I am attaching them sporadically on this uh, ball. First I started with the white ones like I said and I'm going uh, to put several of them and then in between them I'm going to add one pink one. And I did exactly the same thing for the rest of the ball. 
So I was alternating uh, white and pink ones. And the only part I didn't actually put the flowers on was the bottom of the bowl. So one um, part was plain and that's because I decided to leave it plain so I can put it on the top of this candle holder that I actually created earlier. And that is it for this beautiful, beautiful project. I love this for many reasons. First, because this candle holder can be used for so many purposes. And second, because this flower bowl is so pretty and just, you know, reminds me of spring. And I think it's just gorgeous. What do you think? DIY number three. For this product, I'm using these two glass jars that I actually um, recycled from candles from the Dollar Tree, and I'm gonna give them one coat of Rust-Oleum chalk paint in a linen white color from the inside. Next, I'm going to take one of them and I will tape the top portion, like you see me doing over here, because I decided to paint the outside in two different colors. So I made sure, uh, because this glass jar has indentations, I made sure to run over with my nails um, so it doesn't bleed. Now I'm taking this Waverly chalk paint in a color mineral. It is a perfect color for what I actually wanted to do. I wanted to achieve um, cement effect, almost like stone effect. And this color is actually perfect for it. So I'm uh, painting the bottom part of this one jar. And you will see in just a minute, um, the second jar I actually taped uh, diagonally, so I colored one, or actually painted, you see, one part with this mineral color, and then I started, when everything was dried, I started dry brushing with the white paint. I didn't do it too much, but just a little bit, like I said, I wanted it to look like stone. Then on one uh, of the jars, uh, I'm using this Waverly chalk paint in the color celery and the other one I'm using this light pinkish color that I created with the red uh, acrylic paint and my white chalk paint and I'm just filling up the rest of the um, empty spaces on the jar. So now we have two um, two-toned two mini uh, planters and I absolutely love these two colors. I love how they um, work together. I love that they, they are subtle, but they also give a touch of spring. Now I'm drying them. And after that, I took these two golden and silver color. I mixed them together and I'm just going over the rim of this. I thought it would just be nice and give it a little pop. Next, I'm taking the flower foam and filling up these jars. And then I'm taking these um, the flower moss actually that got also from the Dollar Tree and putting it on a top. These mini succulents that you see, they actually came on a clip in a pack of two from the Dollar Tree. I think that's a great value. I took the clip off and I'm just going to now hot glue them in the middle of these mini planters. And that is going to be it for this project. You saw how easy was this to make. I love repurposing things, recycling things. If you're part of my channel, you know that. And I think these jars are so beautiful. So if you see them in Dollar Tree, don't pass them up. They're really, really beautiful. And look how pretty this turned out. I still to this day have these and I think they're perfect, honestly, for any home and any shelf. DIY number four. For this project, I'm going to be using these beautiful, beautiful colors that are from Arteza. But honestly, you can use any colors that you have at home. And then I'm using um, this canvas. It is nine by 12. Again, you can use any canvas, any picture frame, anything that you have on hand. Then this is a, a toilet paper roll. And I am cutting a little slits on the bottom, like you see me doing it over here. I'll do that all the way around and you will see this is what you should end up with. 
Now I'm uh, adding the paints to the plate, spreading them out, and then I'm going to dip uh, this new created tool. And then I will just literally touch uh, down to the surface, to my um, canvas, and I will alternate the colors and just move that a little bit left and right until I get really perfect shape or actually what I think is perfect. This is really optional. You can do any way you want, any colors you want, and add as many layers as you want. This will represent the dandelions. I um, actually love how this is coming along. And I think um, doing this in different colors would be fun as well. Now I am taking uh, the brush and I'm going to just add a little bit of a white in the middle. And also I will start creating uh, stems. I created them very faint. As you can see, I didn't really pull the straight line. I just wanted to make sure they fit into the picture. At the end, I just added a layer of white. And then I added just a little bit of uh, yellow and white with my paintbrush in the middle of these dandelions. Next, I am going to take uh, two different kind of jute twines, or actually different colors, white and um, natural color, and I will wrap them on the bottom of this canvas. I will tie them in the back, and that is it for this project. I really, really like how this turned out. I love that it's really customizable. It was so inexpensive. Again, I love recycling. So this is, again, uh, something you can uh, create with recycled material. And look how pretty it looks like. It is a perfect, perfect project for spring. And I really believe everybody can do it because there's no room for mistake. This can be, you know, created any way you want. And I really hope you like it. DIY number five. For this project, I'm going to be using these two placemats. They came from Dollar General for $2. Now, um, I am going to be use, uh, using these two to create two pillow uh, cases. So that's why I'm going to use this uh, fabric that I already had on hand uh, for the backing. Now this project you can use, you can create by using fabric glue or hot glue. You do not have to have a sewing machine, but since I do have it, um, for me, it was just, you know, natural to use it. First, I'm folding the ends in, like I'm showing over here. I'm putting the pins on and then I'm running through the machine. That way uh, the ends will be very nicely um, created. Next, I am taking my pins again and I am pinning two long sides and then I'm running them uh, through my machine. I'm just making a very simple stitch. When I was done with that, I'm cutting off the excess and then I am flipping this inside out. And after that, I will go and make a stitch on just one side and the other side I left open so I can stuff it with old pillow stuffing. And after I was done with that, I'm going to go ahead and stitch that end as well. Again, if you do not have um, a machine, you can certainly use a hot glue. I know a lot of people do it and it turns out really good. Okay, this is the uh, end product. I really like it. I love how it looks like the saying on it is so perfect for any time pretty much, but it looks really nice with that flower and reminds me of spring. So one was in my reading room and the other one on my master bed. And I really liked them. They were so inexpensive and easy to make. DIY number six. For this project, I'm going to be using this thrift uh, store find. It is a wall um, planter, galvanized wall planter. While I love it, absolutely love it, I did not like this bow. And it was actually welded in um, this planter. So I was a little bit worried I'm not going to be able to take it off. But honestly, it was worth the try because I really like that wall planter. So what I did, I started using my pliers as well as the um, all kinds of tools that I had on hand, like screwdriver and stuff. And then I started taking it off. So you see me over here trying to be very gentle because I didn't want to damage the planter itself 
It took me a little bit of time to take everything off. Some pieces came out very smoothly and some of them had a little bit of um, the bow left over, but I was able to take that off later with the pliers. Now you will see uh, there were some holes that were left behind, but I took my sandpaper and I sanded uh, off and it was not really visible. And again, my um, style is rustic, so that's totally fine. Now I'm taking this burlap ribbon from the Dollar Tree and I am uh, gluing just a little bit uh, on the edge, folding it inside a little bit and then most of the part are falling out. So that way this will kind of give a um, feeling or actually illusion that there is a burlap all the way inside and just coming outside a little bit. I'm doing the same thing on a back as well. Next, I am going to uh, take some bags, like grocery bags, fill them in because I didn't want this planter to be heavy. And then I am uh, putting all kinds of flowers and greenery that I had on hand especially those white and pink ones. They are perfect for springtime. I think they're called baby breath and they're all from the Dollar Tree. Next, I'm taking this board. I actually got it at Dirt Cheap for 30 cents, but it originally came from a Target Dollar Spot for $3. I will take my Rust-Oleum chalk paint in a linen white color and distress it. I love this board. I really think it's so beautiful, but I, I didn't want it to look so plain. I wanted it to be distressed. Next step is going to be to take a Waverly chalk paint in a color truffle and I will go over the edges and I'll go over the uh, pieces where uh, wood meets and I will just distress it even further. Next, I have these um, hooks that came from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to attach one of them to the board. And then I'm going to just add a little dab of hot glue to make sure the planter stays on. I will attach the planter and I thought I was done, but then I looked at the planter itself. It looked a little bit too plain. So I took this jute twine that is in a white color, threaded through the larger needle, and then I am... Um, kind of creating a little um, stitched effect. I'm actually stitching it through uh, the bottom of this burlap ribbon and I'm tying the knots on both ends. Next, I'm using the same uh, jute twine. I'm creating a super simple bow. It is a shoe tying lace type of bow, very simple one, and uh, attaching it to the front of this planter with a little bit of hot glue. That's it for this project. I really, really like it. I love the wall planters and this was my first one that I had and created actually. Now I wanna hear from you, what do you guys think about this one? I would like to remind you that my regular upload times are Tuesdays and Fridays at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Unless I'm uh, participating in a challenge or a collaboration that has different times and dates, I'm gonna let you know in advance. DIY at number seven. For this project, I am using this beautiful frame that I got at um, garage sale and then uh, embroidery hoop. Now you saw on one of the projects I was using one part and then I over here I'm using the smaller part of this hoop. I'm taking this Waverly chalk paint in a color truffle to distress um, this embroidery hoop. I didn't want to leave it plain and white, but also I didn't want to paint it. So I just decided to distress it a little bit. When I was done um, and happy how it looks like, I'm taking these three flowers that are from the Dollar Tree. They're in this vibrant color, similar to my first project. I'm using um, this time one yellow and two pink ones. I'm attaching them together. And also uh, I am taking the greenery that I had on hand, two leaves, and I'm putting them on a bottom, making sure they're going in a different direction. When I was done uh, gluing them all, I was really happy with this look. Then I took um, a piece of a yellow ribbon that I already had on hand. And then I'm just uh, attaching 
um, this wreath to the frame. I'm just creating a very simple knot and I left the tails on because I thought it will look cute. Next, I'm taking this galvanized word that says welcome and I am putting it uh, across this uh, embroidery hoop across my wreath and I'm just attaching it with a hot glue. That is going to be it for this project. This is probably one of my favorite projects back last year that I made and I really really like it. It is very, I don't know, I just think it's so beautiful and I also think it's very customizable and you can change out the ribbon and the flowers depending on the season. DIY number eight. For this project, I am going to be using uh, craft sticks. I'm not sure exactly how many of them I have, but this really depends on how long you want your sign to be. Then I'm attaching two additional ones on the back and then uh, one I cut in half because I wanted to attach also it to the bottom, like I'm doing over here, just hot gluing it on the bottom. That way everything uh, stays in place. Next, I am going to paint the front of it and I'm taking this uh, Beverly chalk paint in a color white. I am giving it one coat. Again, I was not really going for full, full coverage. When everything was dried, I'm taking Beverly chalk paint in a color truffle, truffle and a chippy brush and I'm going over the edges and a little bit in the middle. I wanted to distress it. After this was done, I am taking this stencil. It is actually a set of uh, cardboard stencils that uh, came from Dollar General, yes. And I'm taking this one that looks like tulip and I'm taking this Waverly chalk paint in a color celery and I'm going to stencil um, this flower on the bottom left corner. And then on the top corner, I'm going to stencil just a little pieces of this um, flower or, or actually of the leaves of the flower. I'm using the foam brush from the Dollar Tree. When I was done with this, I am going over with the white paint, just distressing those, that flower a little bit. Next, I'm taking these two white and red acrylic paint, creating this beautiful pink color. And then the stencil, I am uh, stenciling hello in this curvy um, letters. And then I'm taking this very simple letter stencil and I am putting the word spring. I'm tracing it with the pencil and then I'm filling up with a small, small brush. When everything was done and dry, I am going over with the white paint a little bit, distressing it. And then I added a little more of that uh, truffle paint on the edges as well, just wherever I think it's needed to look the way I want to look like rustic enough. After this was done, um, I actually had a suggestion at that time from one of my subscribers to create a stand for um, any kind of uh, project that I have, like picture type of project. So I'm using these Jenga blocks. First, I'm gluing four of them together and then I'm hot gluing two across like I'm showing over here. And then I am going to attach two more together next to each other. And then I'm going to take my uh, picture that I just created and put it in to see how actually far I want to glue those two last one that I created. And when I was uh, done with that, I'm taking one extra Jenga block and attaching it or actually gluing it on the back of this um, sign actually. And that way this stand is created and I um, really like how easy it was. I know I used it for a long, long time for many projects um, from that time on. Now I'm just using this mineral chalk paint to distress it a little bit more because I really like the stressed look. So this is it for this project. I want to really hear from you what you think. I really like these colors for spring. They're very subtle and just beautiful overall. And you saw how easy and inexpensive it was to create this project. DIY number nine. For this project, uh, I'm going to be using this thrift store find. I found this beautiful uh, watering can. It is porcelain, I believe. And while 
it is so pretty i like the shape of it i really did not like that yellow color and the color of those flowers so i am giving this a full coverage of my rustoleum chalk paint in a linen white color since i wanted for full coverage i um, had to use a blow dryer dryer in between uh, the coats to make sure it dries uh, pretty fast Now you remember that flower up, uh, that was on this uh, watering can? I was unsure at that time what I want to do. You could see indentations, so I decided to go ahead and use the pencil and trace it and then later use the, um, I think it was golden um, type of color, yes, metallic uh, acrylic paint and just go over it. Now I asked my viewers to give me opinion, what do they think? Should I have left it plain or um, are they okay with this flower? And 80% of the people responded that I should just ditch the flower and repaint everything. So in this project, you will see this flower um, on, but afterwards I actually repainted it all white and it certainly looks way better. But for now, just try not to look at that flower. So now I'm taking uh, this Waverly chalk paint in a color truffle and I am just distressing a little um, indentations and a little bit on the edges and just going over and dry brushing it. I wanted to, uh, this watering can to look used and to look old. Next, I'm taking this uh, Falkart bronze color or actually copper, I think. And I am going over just some parts of the can where you think it would look, you know, uh, almost like damage from the water. So on the spout, on a uh, on little bit of edges where it meets with, you know, the, the water. So after I was done distressing all this and when I was happy, now I'm taking these beautiful, beautiful flowers that came from the Dollar Tree. I do not really, or no, sorry, from the Dollar General for $3. I don't know the name of it. I'm sorry. And I'm just filling it up. Now for um, the beginning, I left it with just these white flowers. I think it looks beautiful that way as well. Again, please try to disregard this um, painted flower up front. Um, later on, I repainted it with the white and looked so much better. I also tried adding some pink flowers um in between these white ones and i think that actually elevated this look i really like that um better so i want to think uh, hear from you guys now what do you think about that painted flower up front um were my uh viewers at that time right uh, should i have covered and um, what do you think about this project overall We're down to my last project, DIY number 10. I'm using these beautiful colors from Arteza, they're acrylic paint, and then I am using uh, these beads from the Dollar Tree. Also, I use some craft sticks, some uh, white jute twine, and some pen, um, sorry, paintbrush. I am uh, first taking all these uh, beautiful colors and I'm painting um, two of the beads in the same color. So two pink, two purple, and so on and so forth. So after that, I am taking um, the other set of paints. So blue, um, tan color, and I am painting them as well. I left them to dry and while these beads were drying, I am um, taking this jute twine and I'm wrapping it around these craft sticks, creating a tassel. I actually created two of the tassels and I'm pretty sure you uh, 
most of you know how to create it. If not, you can look over here or at some other uh, videos of mine or other tutorials. It is pretty simple to make. So after wrapping it, I'm cutting one, um, the bottom part of it. Next, I'm taking a craft stick. I'm cutting it in half and sanding off the edges just a little bit. And I didn't show over here, but I drilled the top uh, on the top one very tiny hole on both of them. Next, next I'm taking the white uh, paint by Arteza and I'm painting uh, these sticks. Or actually, I'm just distressing um, these sticks a little bit. And then after that, I am also going to uh, take one of the paints that I already used earlier and like a mustard color and I am distressing them even further. When both of these were dried, I am going to go ahead and put uh, with a pencil, I'm going to write my kids' names on them. So first one is Noah and another one for my daughter, Neve. After that, I am going to take gray uh, acrylic paint and my very fine tip brush and I'm going to go over the lettering. These are going to be mini tags you will G see in just a moment. After I was done with that and my uh, beads were dried, I am uh, putting them in a pattern on a jute twine and then I am uh, tying a knot at the end, creating a mini loop. So that's actually going to be a um, napkin ring. So then I am attaching this tassel to uh, this jute twine that actually holds the beads. I am tying two knots, then I'm actually attaching uh, this tag, tying knots again. And next thing uh, that I'm going to do is just take two pieces of this twine and I'll wrap it on a top part of this this tassel and then cut off the excess on the bottom and that way this is created. I did the same thing with other colors for my daughter and this is how they turned out. They're absolutely gorgeous. I love them. I love that they, there's a tag with names so if you're hosting a party you can certainly uh, create this but they're good for any time of the year not just spring and Easter. I want to thank you guys for being here. I want to hear which one of these projects was your favorite. Stay safe in this weather. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you're new. I would love to have you. Thanks so much for being here. I'll see you in my next video. Bye, guys.